Today we're going to talk about how to install the CB1 Raspberry Pi alternative on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P. So I need to tell you a couple of things real quick here. There are several different boards that you can use. Obviously there are Raspberry Pi boards that you can use either with EMMC or without. And then we have uh, two iterations of the board. I'm going to use the most current, which I believe is 2.2, but I'll double check in just a second. And we're going to install it here. And there's little connectors on the bottom right here that'll connect to. But I need to show you on the underside of the board what's going on here. So on the underside of the board, they have two different slots. They have the MCU, which loads the actual firmware, and then they have the OS that you can load over here on the other card. So let me flip this back for a second, and let me grab one of these boards. Hopefully I'm grabbing the most current, and this is 2.2 for the version. So to place this on top, you have to align these. I use the holes as a way to tell, and also the actual uh, antenna is facing towards the edge of the board for all of the boards. So I'm gonna align it over the holes, and then I'm gonna press down. And you'll hear a click, and that should put it in place. Next, I'm gonna attach the antenna and this has a little cup on the bottom that will click over the actual connection over here. So you just align it like so, find the actual cup, and then push down. And that's all you have to do to set up the antenna. Next, we need to image this. Now, I already have firmware loaded on this, and I've placed a jumper over here for five volts of power through the USB so we can connect to the board. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place this in the drive and then into the computer so you may hear a beep. And then I'm going to go over to the desktop and show you a couple things real quick. Here is the Marlin website page for GitHub and this will actually show you what you need to know. So if you click on repositories and then type Manta, you'll see the Manta 8. Now you can download this folder by clicking the code button and then saying download zip. You can check issues over here with the board. And then of course, you can also check on the CB1 by doing the same thing. So this will bring you to the CB1. And inside of here, you'll have the latest system images. So if you click here, there's version 2.2.0. Unfortunately, I'm not going to use this one tonight. I may update the video in the future, but there seems to be an issue that I'm having with a particular pin in the actual printer config file. So I'm going to skip that for tonight and we'll do image version 2.1.2. This one will have a slightly different issue. You have to use two different passwords, whereas this one for the C, or excuse me, for the M4P version of the Manta, you can use one password. So let's click on this to get the image file. And I already actually have the image file, so it's downloaded already. I click this right here for Clipper and downloaded this. So let's go over and set up the actual image. Okay, inside Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.7.3, you're going to click on Choose Image, Use Custom. You're going to select the actual image that we downloaded. Click Open. Then we're going to choose the actual media, which is the storage. Then we'll click Right. And yes, now this may take a few moments to actually image, so I'm going to pause the video and resume after it's completed. Okay, now that it's almost done verifying and just finished, we're going to click continue. Then we're going to go over to the desk for a second. I'm going to pop out the drive. Then I'm going to place it back in the computer. 
then on the computer what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to go to the boot then I'm gonna right click on the system configuration here and edit with notepad now you're gonna need to put in your router name right here and then you're gonna need to put in your router password now you're also gonna have to do this down here for router name and then router password and the reason that I'm telling you this is because this particular build you need to do it for both otherwise you won't connect so I'm gonna do this off screen and save it and then we'll continue from there Okay, so I've saved this, so we're gonna go back over to the desk and pop out the drive. Then I'm gonna place this drive inside of here, but uh, I'm gonna use tweezers because I don't wanna pick up the board. So essentially it goes right in here. If I can get this in here correctly. Let's see if I can do it this way. There we go. So we're gonna power this board and we're actually gonna use a display as well. So I'm going to show you the display inside of the recording so that you can see it. And then we'll sort out later on in a future video how to use it. So this is currently powered down but it does have five volts for a jumper so we can power it over here. So I'm gonna power it up in the computer and then I'm going to change the display so that we can check. So if we're if we've done this correct, we'll see a little display of it loading, which apparently it's doing. So this may take a few moments. So what I'm going to do is pause it until it comes up and then we'll check on the computer what the address is. OK, so it's now finally came up. So we know that it's actually working for the display. So now let's go over to the desktop of the computer and check the router. Now I have blurred out this section up here because this is private to my network. But down here we're going to click refresh and we're going to see if it shows up as an IP address. It should be like CM or CB1, which it is. It's the big tree text CB1. So we're going to copy the IP address, which is 192.168 dot one dot three so I'm gonna open a new browser and paste it in here and this will bring it up now there will be issues so we're gonna actually have to look up first of all our configuration so we're gonna go to machine you can see that there's currently a little setting here for pointing to a configuration so we're going to have to place our configuration in here as well and then point it to it. So I already have it open in a folder. So I'm gonna use this one right here, which is the generic Manta. I'm just gonna drag and drop. Then I'm going to right click, rename. I'm going to copy this. Then I'm gonna cancel, click on printer config. And then I'm going to highlight the name that's currently there and then paste it in. Then I'll click save and restart. Now we actually have to fix the MCU issue that's inside this file. So if we clearly scroll down here, you can see that this is the default. So we're gonna click on our Terraterm session. I'm going to open a new session and I have to double check the address. So I'm gonna blur it out again. Well, actually I can see it over here, it's three. So. We'll change this to a three. It's gonna be TCP port 22, and it's gonna be SSH, which is secure shell. So I'm gonna click OK. Now the password's gonna be BIQU for both the username and password. So I'll click OK. And if you don't know how to change the password, it's uh, S-U-P-S-S-W-D, I think. 
but uh, currently I'm not going to change it because we want to find the information that is in regards to our installation. So I already have a clipper for the actual installation and what we're going to do is we're going to use the LS and it's going to go to the dev serial and buy ID uh, folder right here and then anything in there it's going to display so I'll right click copy that go back over to the TerraTerm right click hit enter and this is our machine for our address so I'm going to right click on it to copy it then I'm going to minimize this go back over here and I'll show you what's going on so if I type serial colon space and then hit control V you can see the addresses are different. So that's why we had to do that. So I'm going to hit enter at the end of this line to space it out. And then I'm going to save and close. Now there is one other issue that we have to deal with on the board. We don't currently have our uh, thermistors attached. So I'm going to attach those so that we don't get a second warning. But I'll show you what it looks like real quick quick if we try and do a restart here there's going to be like an ADC message hopefully yep so ADC out of range that means there's no thermistor so let's go back over to the desk for a moment I'm going to grab two thermistors I'm actually going to plug these in while it's powered with five volts because it's not going to do much damage but usually should power off the board so that is for the actual heat bed and that one up there is for the first extruder so you can see the thermistor down here so let's go back and see if that fixes the problem so let's do a restart again otherwise we're gonna have to do a restart of the machine being a firmware restart so let's see it's having an issue so let's do firmware restart and see if this fixes the problem. So if it does fix the problem, we'll be able to see the dashboard, which we can see now. So to test this, I'm gonna go back over to the desk for a moment. I'm gonna pick up one of the thermistors for the hot end, and I'm gonna place my finger and thumb around it, then go back over to the desk, and we can watch the temperature rise over here. So that's the basic setup. Obviously, you're going to have to make changes to this and possibly updates. But at this time, I want to thank Big Tree Tech for providing me with the Manta M8P and also the CB1 Raspberry Pi alternative. I also want to thank my patrons for their support. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make these tutorials as well as the people that donate on PayPal. I'll place a thank you note at the end of the tutorial. So thank you, and I'll talk to you later.